Welcome to the channel, Optical Mechanic here. I've started building a small steam engine, which is based on a design that I built one to back when I was an apprentice. I've made a, a video about this before. Here's the engine that I made back when I was 16. And I, I made a video about this, how I refurbished it, uh, brought it back to life, had it running um recently as well and um it was in a pretty sorry state looks like it's developing a bit of rust here and there again so i'll need to spray this down with oil um but um yeah so i'd like to get into making uh, steam engines and i thought this would be an easy place to start so uh, i thought i'd see if i could improve on my skills uh, compared to back when i was an apprentice so I, I've set about making some parts, and and this is my logbook back from when, uh, from when I I did that, and in here I have all of the drawings for all of the parts. So there's there's turning, milling, fitting, uh, and so forth required to do this. Uh, but this here is a a section view of the of the assembly of the part of the uh, of the engine, and so far I've made the main shaft. Um, which is this here. Uh, the end piece is a little bit long at the moment, so uh, I was waiting for an M8 die to come in. I was being a bit lazy. I could have uh, single point turned the thread on there, but anyway, I uh, I ordered a, an M8 die, and um, so anyway, that that's how that lines up with the rest of the assembly. So that pops in there, and this main shaft is supported at two ends. So this journal here. Or this this uh, this section on the shaft is supported by this journal here. So this is a a little housing with a, a phosphorus bronze bush pressed into it, and then this end here mounts on on this end of the shaft in a a smaller bearing that's located with this upright here. So so that's how that's arranged. So it's supported at two ends, and um, and so where I'm up to is I've made this bearing housing and um and this video shows how how I make this bearing housing um and the the this is actually brass this bearing material um and I have a, another video to uh to follow up on that one what you'll see in the video is the process that I use to make this housing it it's missing the three holes I'll show you a view of the uh, of the drawing for this part but has a, a pattern of three equally spaced holes to mount it into this upright plate here. I've chosen to, to ream this hole after fitting this bearing into the housing because I didn't want to crush the, the bore slightly by pressing it in. And what I've actually done is I, I heated, I didn't capture this on film unfortunately, but I, I heated up this bearing housing and this little bearing just dropped straight in. And now that it's cooled, it's a really tight fit in there. So all that remains to be done on this one is I just need to turn this OD here so that this is flush and it will take out that little break edge that's in between the two parts. Um, I'll put a break edge on here. Uh, obviously, I'm going to ream this hole to size. Chamfer that and then I'll face this off to the right length because I've made it a little bit oversized at the moment. Um, but what I'll probably do is hold that face, that spigot there in a collet chuck rather than three jaw chuck because what will happen is um, even just the smallest of clamping pressure at three points will um, will put like a, a tri-lobed uh, force pattern into this and then when I bore a nice true hole when I let go it's going to spring and it and it'll go tri-lobed. Um, so I'll clamp that in a collet chuck. So that's how I'll hold that. Um, so before I get into the video, uh, just a couple of things just that might be useful for pe for people. Um, when when I sometimes when I see people drilling holes, they they go in many many steps, and in this video you'll see me drilling um, the bore in this housing. It's a fourteen millimeter bore finished. Um, let me show you the drawing. It's here somewhere there it is so there's the main shaft drawing so if you want to pause the video and 
pick up some dimensions if you want to make one of these you can do or i can pdf the drawings and send them to you but this is the uh, the bearing housing and that's the the pattern of three holes there that I was on about before and um there's a 14 millimeter bore going through it so i don't have a 14 mil reamer so what i did was i i drilled it out to 13 mil um but i went in i mean obviously i i center drilled first <clears throat> and then i i ran a, a 5 mil drill through it and then um i went to a, a 10 mil which i didn't need to do because i could have just gone straight from the 5 mil to the 13 mil and um and what you'll see in the video is um uh i was drilling with the carriage and i've made a video about this my, i think my last video prior to this one was about drilling with the carriage um and i'm experimenting with it at the moment but what you'll see in the video is that the feed's too low on the carriage because the uh, the swarf is so thin and it's coming out in really long fine strands of swarf and really you want drills to work quite hard you want to push the drill quite hard through material um but if you well you'll know what twist drills are like anyway but but this center section here um uh is not um it, it doesn't drill that efficiently so what i prefer to do is um is to choose a drill that's just bigger than the than the web section which is that dimension across there um i'll see if i can insert a picture just to clarify what i mean i think i've got a, a picture from a from a press from an old uh, presto uh, handbook that came with some tools years ago um so really i could have gone straight from the five mil straight to the 13 mil drill and the the other benefit of doing that is that the the cutting force is spread over the the as much of the flute as possible which prevents uh, uneven wear of the drill and also cuts down on an awful lot of chatter and vibration if the load is, is spread over the the full width of the flute i see people taking incremental cuts you know from like maybe one or two millimeter steps and it's really unnecessary really unnecessary so really all you need to do is drill a hole that covers the web se section there and then this could you could whack this straight through then and that's that's how drills are happiest working they need to have plenty of pressure um and you'll know from the swarf um whether it's working hard enough in this video you'll see that it wasn't working hard enough in future videos and future projects i'll be driving the carriage uh, a lot harder and pushing that drill through a lot harder uh, the other thing last thing to say quickly before i i launch into the the footage is um is that i i've repurposed this tool number three for this little boring bar so normally tool number three is for my left-handed uh turning tool uh, i've repurposed it for this little um boring bar here and and this can drill up to about 28 millimeters deep um and the the length of of this bearing housing is 25 so i've got enough there and this can drill down to sorry this can bore down to about 12 to 30 mil diameter and that's what the section of the little boring tool looks like um so this was a this was a pre-ground uh, boring bar um high speed steel boring bar which i've then modified uh, for my purposes uh so that's what i'll be using tool number three for in my dro from now on is this little boring bar because um it was really a gap in my tools um i don't very often use the left hand turning tool i could have done for this project i could have done i could have machined both sides of this in one setup but i chose not to um so there we go right so enough said enough chat um i'll get on with the rest of the video so stay tuned and there'll be some footage coming up now of this uh housing and then i'll finish off with uh just facing off and then uh just finishing off these little final features like i already mentioned all right
Okay, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. And um, what you should have just seen is uh, some of the work that went into finishing this off. Um, so I heated the housing up in the oven to it's aluminium, so um, so that makes it expand. And uh, and this bush just dropped in nicely. And then when that cools, that's got a real tight grip on that bush. Um, so that's going nowhere. And then I turned this outside diameter, faced off, chamfers on the on the bore and on the OD, uh, reamed the hole, and then flipped it over, faced off, chamfered uh, the bore and the outside diameter. So this housing assembly is now finished. And the shaft that I made previously, um, which uh, I have another video for, we'll just do a quick test fit now. And that's a really nice fit. Very happy with that. That's going to be a really nice bearing for that shaft. That's fantastic. That feels really good. That's a really good fit. And that's it for this one. So that's that bit done of the engine. Um, it's not much to see yet, but um, as I mentioned earlier, this, this is what it looks like when it's finished. And uh, thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye for now.